Baz Lerman, it is uh, great to catch up with you, especially when we want to talk about one of the best movies of the year, Elvis. Thank you. Um, you know, what great performances you got out of everyone. I mean, I'm talking even the the, the extras <laughs> were yeah. incredible. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You know, Tony, no one said that. And I want to tell you that when the film almost went away and we came back and Tom so bravely, Tom Hanks, so bravely came back and said, I will, I will come back even though I've been ill. And you know, we all, the world had shut down. And, and from every, I, I don't call them extras, I call them support actors. Right. Every support actor in the movie had a character, had a character breakdown. And I think unlike any movie I've ever been, you know, being on, the cohesive love of every actor in this movie, I mean, Someone like um, Gary Clark Jr. had to be in quarantine in a tiny hotel room for two weeks to do that one scene where he plays Big Boy Crowder. You know, um, Alton Mason, you know, they had to be in tiny rooms and they did it and they gave. And, you know, it's made me remind myself that for all of the kind of theatrics I have in my movies, I come from an acting teaching background. Mm. And, you know, if you don't have the actors all working together as one. If they're not a true ensemble, almost a family, and if they're not all giving, then you have nothing. There's no trick I can do to make it work. And at the center of that is the miracle of Austin Butler and Tom Hanks, actually. I mean, together, you know? And I'm so grateful and gratified um, of what all those actors gave, as you said, right down to the last support actor in the tiniest corner of the frame. It's a combination of, of, you know, that you can't even describe it, but everybody giving a piece of their soul to this project yes. and, yes. and then getting a piece of everybody's soul back. It's, it's just a glorious feeling when you, when you're on a project like this, that has so much love. Yeah. Well, I'm, you've got the right word soul. And I think that if people ask me, what is it that surprised me most about spending all that time I did with the space in Graceland, finding some of Elvis's childhood friends, uh, uh, learning about him, his soul, is that he, he's one of the most impersonated people on the planet. And sometimes he'd become a bit of a joke. But the real truth is he was the most soulful and spiritual person because like even uh, towards the end of his life, he would be with the sweet inspirations after two shows after the Colonel sort of, you know, get out one more show, singing gospel till the sun came up, you know, soul. And I think kind of, I have to be cautious not to be too fantastical, yeah. but I felt the soul of Elvis was with us all the way through. It was sort of a guide, you know, that, that he was all about bringing people together and touching them in their soul. And I think the achievement of Austin Butler who never broke character for two years, not day or night, who never gave up, who just fought, had to sing, had to dance, and had to not just act, but give this nuanced, complex, internal life performance. You know, sometimes it's, it's in the silences that Austin has that you feel the deepest part of the performance. Yeah, yeah Elton, I just think that's true. Well, Elton John once told me that music isn't the notes, it's the spaces between the notes. Yeah, well, Elton would know. I know him dearly and well. And um, when Elton talks about music, he's never wrong. Well, again, uh, such a marvelous film and such a tribute to Thank a you. genius. Um, and Austin and Tom are uh, international treasures, as you are. Thank you, man. I, I'm so gratified by that.